Hey there, and welcome to The Student Architect. My name is Chelsea, and today I'm gonna to share with you a quick tip on how to link your Excel files into both AutoCAD and Revit. So a lot of times you'll get files from structural engineers for hold down schedules and things like that. And it can get pretty tricky if you're trying to manage all of that information in both Excel, AutoCAD, and Revit. So the best way that I've found to manage all of that information is to link the Excel file into both AutoCAD and Revit. So what that does is that if there's any changes that are made, you only have to make it in one place, which is in that Excel file. And that saves a lot of headaches down the line where you would have otherwise had to make that change in both Excel, AutoCAD, and Revit. So this takes all of those problems out of the equation. So let's hop on over to the computer and I'll show you how to do it. So here you can see the Excel file that I have from a structural engineer for a roof member hold down schedule. So if there are any changes in the schedule, this is the place that I'm going to make it. So what we'll want to make note of here is the, um, the cells that are involved in the table are included in the table. So we'll go from A1 all the way to C14. So what we want to do now is go over to AutoCAD and we'll go to annotate and link data. So from here, we'll do create a new Excel data link and we'll name that roof member hold down schedule. And now we'll select that Excel file that we have. So we'll navigate to that. I have it right here. We'll select open and make sure you have it as a full path. And you can see here if there are multiple sheets in the Excel file, you can select which sheet that you want to make the table from. And instead of doing link entire sheet, I like to do link to range because you can see that there are all of these extra uh, rows here and we don't want that. So like we saw at the beginning, we're gonna do from A1 colon C14 and we'll hit okay. And we'll hit, oh, now we can see the preview and we'll hit okay now. And you can see that that didn't really do anything. So what we wanna do is go up to table um, from data link and roof member hold down schedule. That's what we want. You can see the preview and you can change these settings if you want to, but we'll keep them the way they are. And here's our schedule. That was pretty easy, huh? So if you're just using AutoCAD and you don't have to worry about Revit, then this is the only step that you'll need. Um, and if there are any changes that are made in the Excel file, what you'll wanna do, so let's say, what if they wanted to make this in two by 10 instead of a two by eight? We need a little bit more support there. So we'll change that only on the Excel file. We'll hit Control S to save. We'll go back to our AutoCAD, select the table, and we'll go up to download from source. And now you can see that that information has changed, which is great. So another cool thing that you can do is you can actually change um, a little bit of the formatting of this table here. So you can see that we can change these to, uh, we can make these columns shorter and wider if we need to. Um, yeah, and multiple rows. So you can do a little bit of editing here. So now that we have our schedule here, we'll want to save this. So we'll hit Control S to save. Go to our working files. And I've already done this, so I'll just save over that file. Hit save. Yes, we'll replace it. Um, and then we'll go over to our Revit file. We'll hit link CAD. We'll select that um, AutoCAD file that we just made, and you can see it's a DWG, so that's correct. We'll want this to be black and white as we have it, and also manual center, because we're not quite sure where that base point is. Everything else looks good, so we'll hit open. And it's telling us that there's nothing in paper space, and it's asking us if we just wanna import from model space, and yes, we do, so we'll hit yes there. And here is our table. So what I want you to keep an eye on is this uh, two by 10 here. But before we 
before we get into that, I want to show you that um, it's a little bit different when you link it into Revit than when you link it into AutoCAD because when you're when you're in AutoCAD, you have a little bit of capability of making some modifications, as I showed you before, where you can expand, um, you can make the cells longer or shorter, or you can kind of change um, how they're organized. But when you're in Revit, you can see here you get what you get. There's no uh, there's no capability of modification here. Um, so if you wanted to change cell sizes um, to make it fit, in, fit on the sheet properly, then you'll have to do that in either Excel or in AutoCAD. So now that we have that out of the way, again, I want you to look at that 2 by 10 here. We're going to go back to the Excel file. We're going to change that back to a 2 by 8. And we'll hit Save. Then we'll go back to Revit. And we're going to go to Manage, uh, Manage Links, CAD Formats, and then this is our roof member hold down schedule, and we'll hit Reload. And what I want you to see here is that nothing's going to change. Still says 2 by 10. It did not change back to 2 by 8. And that is because we have to go back into our AutoCAD file, select that table, and again, we have to do download from source. So it's an extra step, which is a little unfortunate, but it totally pays off in the end when you have to, when it's only one file that you have to worry about making changes in. So it's just kind of that peace of mind that you know that, um, that all of the information is correct as long as you're, you're relinking um, in both the AutoCAD and the Revit file, which is a little bit annoying, but I think it's a small price to pay for the peace of mind that you'll get. Okay, so now that we have that uh, that changed and downloaded from source, we will hit Control S to save. Go back into Revit, back to Manage, Manage Links, CAD Formats, Roof Member Hold Down Hold Down Schedule, and Reload. And now you'll see that it's then updated. So it's an extra step, but it's totally worth it in my mind. So it's pretty simple. So that's my quick tip for you today on how to manage your Excel schedules in both AutoCAD and Revit. I hope you found this helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe. And if you'd like to contribute to support my work, you can do so at thestudentarchitect.studio slash contribute. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.